Hello, in this session of basic thermodynamics model 1 lecture 3 in that I am going to take fundamental concepts and definitions in that I will take thermodynamic equilibrium definition, mechanical equilibrium, thermal equilibrium, chemical equilibrium, diathermic wall and adiabatic wall, zeroth law of thermodynamics, temperature, concepts, scales, fixed point and measurements. Thermodynamic equilibrium. A system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium if there is no change in any macroscopic properties and if it satisfies the conditions of mechanical, thermal and chemical equilibrium then the system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium. Then what is thermal equilibrium? When a system is in contact with its surroundings and there is no change in temperature of the system then the system is said to exist in thermal equilibrium. Mechanical equilibrium A system is said to be in mechanical equilibrium when there is no change in force acting in any part of the system. There is no change in the force of the any part of the system then we can say it is a mechanical equilibrium. Chemical equilibrium a system is said to be in chemical equilibrium when there is no chemical reaction within the system and there is also there is no movement of any chemical constituent from one part of the system to another. Next, diathermic and adiabatic wall. Here the system what we are going to consider that is enclosed with the envelope boundary or surface enclosing a system may be a conductor or an insulator. That's a, whatever the boundary is there, that may be a conductor or insulator. If it is conducting, if this contacting wall or surface is a conductor, which allows the heat energy to pass through it, then it is called a diathermic wall. In the diathermic wall, the heat is passed across the system boundary. Here, if this is the system bound, system, if you consider, and the uh, system boundary is the dotted lines, then across this system boundary, the heat can transfer, heat energy can transfer, then this wall, whatever is there, that is called as a diathermic wall. If the conducting wall is an insulator, which does not allow the heat to flow across the boundary, then it is called as adiabatic wall. Here, the enclosure system is considered, that system is called as a adiabatic system. In this one, the boundary, whatever shown here, the boundary across this boundary there is no heat transfer taking place that is completely insulated that's why that uh, whatever the wall is there it is called as a adiabatic wall then zero law of thermodynamics the one of the important law of the thermodynamics that is the zero law of thermodynamics its statement will take first that is a, if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with a third body separately then they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other that means if two bodies are two bodies are uh, having the same temperature uh, with the third body separately then these two also have the same temperature thermal equilibrium means in terms of the temperature we can say or the other statement we can say if a body C is thermal equilibrium with the body A and also separately with the body B then body A and B will be in thermal equilibrium with each other. You can say here the body C is thermal equilibrium with body A and the body C is thermal equilibrium with body B separately then body A and B are also in thermal equilibrium. Then here the whatever the zero law of thermodynamics we have considered okay that is the base for measuring the temperature okay the temperature is sense of hotness or a coldness or a measure of hotness or a coldness that is to be measured okay the measurement is carried out by using the equipment that is called as a thermometer and thermometric property uh, is uh, one of the thermodynamic property which will change due to the temperature that is called as a thermometric property okay then here the zero law provides the basis for the measurement of temperature how much hot it is there how much cold is there that we have to measure that measurement is called as a measurement of temperature the the third body in the zero law whatever is there is called the thermometer 
the third body whatever is called which is the thermal equilibrium with the two bodies that is called as a uh, thermometer which is used for measuring the temperature here the some of the thermometric properties which are changing with respect to temperature okay that we are going to consider and if that thermometric property we are user for measuring the temperature okay then the instrument whatever we are going to use that is called as a particular thermometer okay in which thermometer in what the thermometric property we are going to use that is given in this uh, part that is a first one alcohol or mercury in glass okay the that type of thermometer if you use then length whatever the length of change is there that is the thermometric property electrical resistance if you use the resistance will be the thermometric property thermocouple if you use electromotive force will be the thermometric property constant volume gas thermometer in that pressure will be the thermometric property constant pressure gas thermometer in that volume will be the uh, thermometric property radiation pyrometer here intensity of radiation is the thermometric property here at a high temperature we are going to measure by using the pyrometer the next the temperature scales here the different temperature scales we are going to use that one okay that how the variation of that thermometric property is taking place with respect to temperature okay we know that the temperature is a function of resistance emf e pressure p volume v and the radiation intensity i in case of electrical resistance electric resistance thermometer thermocouple constant volume thermometer constant pressure thermometer and radiation thermometer respectively in establishing a temperature scale we need a relationship between the temperature and the thermometric property how the variation taking place that relation we need for finding the temperature and establishing the relationship for that one okay then here the directly direct proportionality the temperature is directly proportional to the thermometric property then the the constant of proportionality is taken here then by using this relation we can find out the temperature whenever this thermometric property changes linear relation that is equal to ax plus b then quadratic relation t is equal to alpha x square plus beta x plus gamma polynomial the relation that is a dash plus b dash x plus c dash x square plus d dash x cube plus that one continues these are the different relations what are going to what are there with the thermometric property to measure the temperature then next the measurement of the temperature in this measurement of the temperature there are two methods are used one is a two standard fixed point method and another one is a one standard or a single standard fixed point method the first we will take that is a two standard fixed point method in this one to establish a temperature scale for measurement of the temperature an easily reproducible state of an arbitrarily chosen standard system is considered it is called as a fixed points okay the arbitrarily randomly chosen the two standard points are considered okay and of the system those two points standard points what are there those are easily reproducible those are the one is ice point another one is a steam point these are is can be easily reproduced and these are the standard points then what is meant by ice point and the what is a steam point also we have to take here that is a ice point is the the lower fixed point or ice point is the temperature at which pure ice melts at its standard pressure the pure ice starts melting at what temperature at the standard pressure that is called as a ice point then steam point the upper fixed point it is or steam point is the temperature at which pure water boils at standard pressure the pure water boils at the standard pressure that is taken as the steam point these points are considered as fixed points in this method the thermometer is first placed in contact with a system whose temperature t of x is to be measured here the first the whatever the thermometer is there that is brought into contact with the system whose temperature the t of x is to be measured then it is placed in contact with the arbitrarily chosen standard system at ice point where the temperature that is say t of x1 is already we know the variation of the temperature can be assumed to be a linear function of x 
here the variation of temperature whatever is there that is assumed to be a linear function of x which is a thermometric property hence for the first system that is when we brought into a uh, contact with that uh, system temperature whose temperature is to be measured and brought into the that is uh, ice point then we can write the relation that is t of x1 by t of x is equal to x1 by x here the t of x1 is the ice point temperature t of x, x is the temperature is to be measured x1 is the thermometric property at ice point x is the thermometric property at uh, of the system whose temperature is to be measured then the thermometer at temperature t of x when placed in contact with another chosen standard system at steam point where the temperature is t of x2 hence for the second system what we can write the t of x2 by t of x is equal to x2 by x1 where t of x2 is the temperature at steam point and t of x is the temperature is to be measured and x2 is the thermometric property at steam point x is the thermometric property of the system whose temperature is to be measured then by subtracting these equations we get that one the subtracting these two equations then t of x1 minus t of x2 in the numerator in the denominator t of x will be common that is taken t of x then here the x1 minus x2 will be in the numerator the next is common in the denominator okay here the t of x uh, here we have to find from this one the t of x whatever is there here in the denominator that we can take that is the t of x whatever is there this we can send that side okay then t of x1 minus t of x2 remains in the numerator and denominator comes to the x1 minus x2 and this x will be multiplied this is the relationship this is the relationship if we know the temperature at the ice point and at the steam point and the thermometric property change whatever at the ice point and the steam point if you know that one the thermometric property of any system if you have then we can find the temperature of that system the next one is a single standard fixed point method here the kelvin pointed out a single point fixed point such as triple point of water the triple point of water what it is that one that is the point at which ice liquid water uh, liquid water and the water vapor coexist in equilibrium at triple point all the three phases of this water ice and liquid are coexist in the equilibrium at this point whatever the uh, temperature is there and that we have to take the temperature at this uh, state is uh, arbitrarily assigned the value of 273.16 okay that triple point temperature is the 273.16 kelvin if t of t is the triple point temperature of water then x of t is thermometric property when the body is placed in contact with the water at a triple point temperature then we can write the again this one linear relationship that is the t of t is equal to a into x t and the t of t is the triple point temperature a is the constant of proportionality x t is the thermometric property at triple point then from this one we can have the this a that is a is equal to t of t by x t that a the constant we can find out that one a is equal to t of t by x t and that is equal to t of t already uh, the value is given for that one 273.16 bar x t this one will be there then if t is equal to the temperature at any system that can be given as the a x then the a already we got this value 273.16 by x t then x is already here into x by x t we are going to get therefore the t is equal to 273.16 into x by x t here by knowing the thermometric point at the uh, uh, thermometric value at property value at uh, triple point and the thermometric property of the system whose temperature is to be measured that if you have then the temperature of that system can determine by using the single fixed point method then next here the sum of the this uh, that is the method we are going to use for measuring the temperature but the sum of the instruments we are going to use for measuring the temperature those are called as the thermometers uh, 
and different types of thermometers we have to discuss here the first one is a uh, liquid in glass thermometer already we have taken the different types of thermometers there but uh, for our syllabus here the liquid in glass thermometer and constant volume uh, ga volume gas thermometer constant pressure gas thermometers are there the, in this uh, session i am going to discuss this liquid in glass thermometer only and remaining thermometers i will discuss in the next session okay in this one liquid in glass thermometer in the glass tube there is a liquid is present that one okay then that will expand due to the temperature okay that small quantity of the liquid the liquid may be either mercury or it may be alcohol okay in that one whenever it comes contact with the temperature at this point then that will be expand and length of expansion whatever is there it is the thermometric property and that is used for measuring the temperature and here a small quantity of liquid enclosed in a glass capillary is called liquid in glass thermometer in this the thermometer the expansion of the liquid which is the length of the liquid column is used for as the thermometric property example for this one there is a mercury in glass thermometer and here for this one the t of l that is for the length l t of l the temperature what we are going to find out that is a 273.16 that is again linear relationship with the thermometer what the single fixed point uh, measurement method we have used okay that is multiplied with the length multiplied with the length that one okay that is uh, length uh, here the length of that one by the it is uh, divided by that is a l of ltm that is a length for the that whatever the triple point length for the triple point l by lt that if you have then you can find out the liquid in glass thermometer and this whatever the the thermometer here the expansion is taking place the length we are going to get and from that the already we will have the length at the thermometric proper uh, triple point then by using that one we can find the temperature by using this liquid in glass thermometer okay directly in this one okay by this method we are going to find out the temperature but uh, here the directly the graduations are provided in terms of the degree celsius and the degree fahrenheit for the glass in uh, liquid thermometer by this length we are going to provide the graduations this one by using this equation these graduations are provided these values are provided on this glass tube okay and by this one we can directly get the whatever the temperature is there in terms of the degree celsius and in terms of the degree fahrenheit okay and the other uh, different types of the thermometer okay the commonly used that is the liquid in uh, that uh, constant volume gas thermometer and constant pressure gas thermometer that i'll continue in the next session and for those uh, you can watch my next video thank you